find myself up until one in the morning sometimes. So. Oh my gosh, that is rough. Um, yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you joined. Um, would you like to kick off? Just say we're going to go around. Um, I'm sure people will trickle in. We'll just do a few introductions um before david takes the stage and and tells us all these amazing first uh how to improve your first impressions and i'll just say david before we even get into you how about not being late to an interview that's probably going to be on your uh, <laughs> uh anyway um let me admit a few more folks but kathy um what I am curious um, to do, and, and David, I can ask you this or I can and do one. Would you like everyone av as they do an introduction to do a specific icebreaker that would help you with your presentation? Um, or do uh, you uh, No, it's fine. I mean, however you wanna do it or anybody feels comfortable, but we don't need icebreakers for I'm concerned, but they're fun. Okay. Well, I would say just because I have been interviewing so many people with my new role. So I, that's why I'm so excited for David's topic. Um, I'm building a team. And so Kathy, maybe as you start, introduce yourself, where you work, the whole spiel, and then either um, maybe like your favorite interview question. Um, and then also just let anybody know if you wanna be, if you're looking for a mentor, mentee, et cetera. So we'll start with you. Okay. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kathy. Uh, I've been in the multifamily industry for about 15 years now. Um, I Last year I left the multifamily industry. Now I'm an asset manager at Lofty AI. We deal with mo mostly uh, single family rentals. Um, I thought moving over here would be uh, glamorous, but it's a lot more work being an asset manager than a community manager. Um, there's a lot of red tape, a lot of permissions, a lot of uh, things you cannot do until you get approval. So it's it's um, it's been an adjustment for sure. Um, I'm actually looking for a mentor. Um, I am opening. I'm I'm open to mentoring someone as well too. Um, but I do want to be cognizant of my time, and I I don't think I'll be able to do that until like end of fourth quarter this year. Um, there's just a lot going on at work right now. We're launching like so many different products. So, um, but yeah, that's that's me, I'm Kathy. Awesome, thanks Kathy. Um, I'm gonna put in our recap, I'll, I'm trying to get better at, so that when folks rewatch the, um, our sessions, that mm -hmm. they can quickly be like, oh, Michelle's looking for this, David's looking for that, Kathy's looking for this. So um, thanks for calling that out. Stacy. would you like to go next? Hello. Um, Hello. Hi, I'm Stacy Feeney. I'm the founder and creative director at Zip Code Creative. We are a um, branding and design agency specifically for multifamily. And um, through this group, I actually already have found a mentor. Um, but if I'm allowed to double up, I will accept even more. Um, I love to learn and um, I'm also open to being a mentor. I have not yet um, received a mentee if anyone wants to speak to a creative type person. <laughs> I love it. Are you, um, would you mind sharing who you found as a mentor? Yeah, Janet, Janet Rosseth. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's great. And um, have you, have you guys been paired up long? I don't recall how um, we actually have been, uh, I think it's since earlier this year, I want to say March. Oh, good. Okay, great. Or April, possibly. Um, and then we were able to meet in person at AIM, which was great. <gasps> That's awesome. Cool. It's always the best when you get to meet the folks in person, right? There's just something different about being able to give the hugs and high fives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, thanks for joining this call. Michelle, would you like to go? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle Anderson. I currently am with a company called ResPage. We um, and I've been a multifamily forever. Uh, <laughs> um, I started out on site and then joined the vendor world over 20 years ago. So um, here I am. Um, 
I would have to say I'm probably looking for a mentee because of, you know, what I'm looking to do as far as my goals would be. I'm trying to broaden my horizons more on a national level. I've kind of like I'm in the Philadelphia market a lot and I've got really strong roots here, but am branching out nationally. So looking more uh, along help of how to best do that. I love that. Um, have you um, you joined about, about like two months ago, I think, right? Roughly? Yes. Yes. Um, and I just am curious to get some of this feedback too, is um, have you been able to kind of navigate the spreadsheet easily to just kind of see who's looking for what, or would you like a little one-on-one -on -one with me offline? I think I would like off? a one-on-one -on -one offline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a note because I want to make sure everyone's comfortable with that. Um, okay, perfect. Duly noted. <laughs> um, Maury, I'm so excited to see you. Have you guys been following? I have to just give you a little shout out actually. So if you have not been following him on LinkedIn, this guy has like i think you're like the poster child for resiliency and you have i think we have so much that could feed into david's session from like your recent interview experience your your shifting of jobs and moving states etc so um congrats on your new role i'm excited to have you join this call and if you want to just let everybody know who you are let everybody know who you are what you're doing now and the company you work for yeah Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Mari. I am a traveling property manager. Um, this is kind of a dream job that I've been kind of wanting to have for the past like two years. So how it came into fruition after my first day moving to Arizona, getting laid off six hours after my first day, really crazy, but um, just trusting and leaning into my, um, just knowing that everything works out for the better good. Um, it did allow me to um, be present when that opportunity um, hit. So I'm traveling to um, properties, specifically lease stuff in Salt Lake City, and um, I'm getting them sold to make the owners happy. <laughs> That's so awesome. So you officially moved to Utah in that area? Right, I moved back to Salt Lake. So I was in Salt Lake already, sold everything, drove to Arizona, then you know, made a little quick trip back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, like, I, I almost felt like your story was like a movie. I'm like this this literally only happens in movies what happened to you but i feel like you've been like a ray of positivity on linkedin um i think for other people like just inspiration in fact i tagged a few folks who joined the mentor group recently who are currently looking for a new opportunity um and i said you need to follow him because he has some great stories about just keeping your chin up right like during hard times um yeah. it can be really tough so thanks so much for joining and so can you remind everybody if you're looking for a mentor or a mentee or or both like what you're looking for yeah so i would love a mentor i think i can always learn um a mentee i would be happy my strength is in apartment sales leasing so if anybody needs help with that let me know <laughs> <laughs> i love it thank you so much for joining um ariel would you like to go Hello, hello. Hello. Um, today. But um, yeah, so my name is Ariel Guzman. I am with uh, Snap, the supplier side of the multifamily industry. I was on site property management for the last eight years before joining the dark side. And I actually have two mentors in the group, one of which unfortunately left the industry recently, which I'm very sad about, but I'm going to Tampa in September and meeting him in person. So I'm really excited for that. Um, and yeah, what else are we doing? Is that is that good? Oh know. yeah, no, that's good. Um, and if you since you have two mentors from the group, um, are you looking to mentor anyone yourself? Yeah, I would love to be. You know, if that if if I can be of assistance to anyone who's either maybe on site looking to get into the supplier side, or um, I mean, property operations, I've, I'm so very passionate about. It just I'm more passionate about the supplier side. So yeah, if I can be a mentor to anyone, I would love that. I love that. And I'm so excited that you get to meet Josh in person. Um, he's, he's fantastic. So yeah, and it's, it's going great at his new gig. So I'm so happy for him. Oh, that's really awesome. I just saw Rebecca, we're going to pick on her right when she comes in. Um, I just saw Rebecca Cook joining Rebecca, you came in right at the red carpet time to be introduced. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> It's like, find the unmute button, right? 
I think I might be able to unmute you if you need some help. Uh, let's see. Oh, why won't it let me unmute you? Hang on. Oh, I think you got it. Wait, nope, I can't hear you. Uh, we had this happen to someone on their last call. What was the fix that Joseph suggested? Um, I think there might be something perhaps in your settings. But I can't remember what it is. Okay, let's see if that microphone is going to work. Yep, did it. Perfect. What I was saying is that you jump from one video format to another and it switches. So I have three microphones and two cameras <laughs> and you put it all together and eventually it works. Yes. And you're like, oh my gosh. Well, I, I know I called on you like right as you were entering. So bringing you up to speed, we just kind of went around the room virtually doing introductions. So if you want to just share with everybody who you are, where you work, how long you've been in the industry, and then also within this group, have you found a mentor and are you looking for additional mentor-mentee relationship? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Rebecca Cook. I'm a director of multifamily management for Freedman Communities. I have been in the industry, we'll just say since the 90s, let's just leave it at that. And, um, but long enough, really love what I do. It's a lot of fun. Um, I also started on site, so it was just kind of one of those things that kind of progresses through, like a lot of the people on the call. Um, as far as a mentor, I have found a mentor through the program, which I've really appreciated. Probably had four meetings so far. They've been structured. Great. A lot of the things I've been able to immediately put into work the very next day. So it's been cooking along really well. I would love to have a mentee. Absolutely love it. When you get to be doing this as long as I have, I think it's important to give back. Um, where my heart is would be maybe a green regional manager somebody who's just stepping into that corporate role because the leap from on-site to corporate can be very challenging to navigate, not just in the operations of what we do, but how we work amongst other departments, how that goes. So mm -hmm. if you know of anybody looking, I'm your gal. I love that. And then would you mind sharing with the group who your mentor is that you found? Um, yeah, Steve Halsey. I, um, if, if you guys are not following Steve Halsey, by the way, he um, was the very first person when I first put this idea out there who supported me and was like, I, I've got your back. And I was like, oh my gosh. And he's a former like coach. He has a really cool background um, and it, he's like a multifamily legend. <laughs> so, so jealous. I, he's so jealous. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because Kathy, we have that we share the whole Amley thing mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. Oh my God. He's one of the greatest. Well, um, I'm so excited that you found somebody and I'm just making notes so that when people listen back to this call, they can um, hopefully relate to one or one or all of you. But um, so let's jump into David. I'm so excited for, um, for this call. If you would love to tell everybody who you are, but um, I think this is really timely. So one of the things about these informal meet and greets, which is what we're on right now, is I'm excited that members are stepping up like David, who are saying that they're passionate about a certain subject matter. And of course, because David is in the recruiting side of the world at South Coast Partners, he has, you've been there, what, like eight years, I think, right? I don't want to take your whole bio from you, but. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been with South Coast Partners since 2014, so. Yeah, so he knows a thing or two about recruiting and first impressions. And for those of you who joined after the start of this call, I was late to my own call, um, finishing up on another call. So we're joking that uh, probably one of the things you shouldn't do in an interview is be late to it. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited uh, for anybody in the future that wants to do what David's doing, or if you have a subject matter that you're passionate about, um, and you want to present for 20, 30 minutes on one of these informal meet and greets, they're great. It's a great way for people to get to know you. And then also we all learn along the way. So I'm really excited, David, that you decided to do this for us today. And I appreciate everyone um, shifting the hour. And um, so with that, if you want to take the stage, it's yours to tell us how to improve first impressions in the interview process. 
All right. Well, thank you, Tara, and thank you everybody for the opportunity to speak today. And I do love this group and I do have a mentee myself in this group that we meet once a month and it's been a fantastic relationship. So um, before we begin, I do want to tell you a story. And um, this story starts back in 2014. I was single and um, lonely and, and really wanted a relationship. And uh, I was doing everything that I could think of. I was getting on the dating sites and going on a few dates and uh, nothing was working. I was asking my friends and family if they knew anybody, nothing was working. And I even prayed like, God, please help me get a date, you know? And, uh, and but I was going to these meetings and at these meetings, there was this woman there who was so beautiful on the outside and she would talk and she would speak from the heart. And I really wanted to get to know her. But the problem was, is she would show up to these meetings right when they started and she would leave right when they ended. So I was never able to get a conversation going. And so I did what any gentleman would do. And uh, I stalked her on Facebook and um, I tried to recruit her for myself. But uh, um, so I sent her messages, you know, on Facebook and like, hey, I'd, I'd like to go have dinner or coffee with you. And three times she turned me down. No, I'm not seeing anybody from the opposite sex right now. It was bad. And um, thankfully I'm in sales and, you know, you guys persist. And uh, so, but like six or seven months later, we were at this conference and there was about 120 people at this conference and it was a real busy weekend type thing. And there was a break in the conference and she comes up to me and she says, David, why do you keep messaging me? And, you know, in the meantime, she looked at my profile and like what I liked and disliked and who I was friends with and and uh, what my job was. She's a realtor and I'm an executive recruiter in the real estate industry. So she thought I was actually trying to recruit her. And but I am surprised, you know, my heart's pumping and I look at her and I, I pause and make sure that my posture is good. Look her in the eyes and. You know, said, I think you're beautiful and I want to get to know you better. And she turns to me and she says, OK, and then she just left. And I'm like, what? What does that mean? You know, and I didn't know. But two or three hours later, she comes back up and we start talking. We talked for three or four hours at night. And we start dating. And uh, fast forward to today, that woman is now my wife. And. I got a picture. We got married in 2017. Uh, if you can see that photo. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? You can see it a little bit. Um, oh, you look so happy. Yes, that's better. Congratulations. Yeah. So, that's proof that we're happily married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Best sales job ever. So the, the reason I'm telling you that story is because whether you're in the dating process or you're in the interview process, the first impressions do matter. You know, what your background is, your profile, all of these things, who you're friends with, what people are saying about you. I found out later, she was asking people in those meetings that I was going to about my reputation, what they knew about me. So all of these things matter when making a first impression because here's the thing is when we're trying to do these things, we want to come up with green flags, right? So in the interview process, the green flags get you the money, right? Or get you the raise or the promotion. And so we want to have as many green flags and, and not as many red flags. So the point that I want to discuss today is, you know, how do we get the green flags? How do we set up the relationship from the beginning with, with respect and trust and ultimately move on to the next step? And so, first of all, I want to talk about the candidate side, and then I'll talk a little bit about the company side and the hiring manager side. But on the candidate side, the first impression starts, believe it or not, I mean, it starts even with your networking, what people are saying about you. But it also starts, if people don't know you, with your LinkedIn profile. You know, 90% of the time, people right now look up your LinkedIn profile. 
right? It's huge. I mean, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and a lot of people say, you can find me on LinkedIn, right? You want my email? No, I'll just look at me up on LinkedIn. So your LinkedIn profile is very important. And number one, uh, believe it or not, a lot of people still don't have a photo on LinkedIn and they're looking for a job and they don't have a photo or if they have a photo. So the first thing is, is a professional photo. And, and sometimes, you know, some people still have that bathroom selfie, you know, and like, it's just, it's not very professional. And so we want to have a professional photo. There's a lot of app, you know, there's an AI app out there right now. You give them 10 regular photos and they send you back professional photos. It costs $30. You can also like if you're at a wedding or any a conference or an event, have somebody take a professional photo of you. Um, but have a professional photo. It is important because you want to set up that. Again, we want to do things that create green flags instead of red flags and having an unprofessional photo creates red flags. And the other thing is to match your CV or your resume. In your LinkedIn profile, you want you want your your resume and your LinkedIn profile to match. A lot of the times, people will have different dates on the LinkedIn profile and the resume, and, and different jobs. Believe it or not, different companies, different titles, and that immediately just creates more questions than answers. And like half the people right now, if you if they send you your resume. Their resume will be different than their LinkedIn profile. And we have to say, can you please update your LinkedIn profile? Because it doesn't look good. People will have too many questions. You know, why is the dates for 2017 completely different on your resume and your LinkedIn profile? So really need to, I would suggest updating your LinkedIn profile and your resume every month or every six months, honestly. Like you heard Mari there. I mean. Not, you don't know what's going to happen, you know? So having these things updated, it just, it, 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 it helps you when you need it. And you don't know you need it until you actually need it, you know? But if you're prepared, then it's easy. So those are the two things about the LinkedIn profile that I want to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is the resume and... There's there's three things about the resume that I want to talk about. Number one is on the resume, have data, numbers, um, measurable results, quantifiable accomplishments. You can put these on your LinkedIn profile as well, but these are going to be different for every position. Obviously, we got everything from vendor side to training to marketing to property management. So it's going to be different for every but what are your goals in your position? You know, what are your metrics? Uh, if you've hit those, then let's list them on the resume. You know, those are the accomplishments that you've done. Did you raise occupancy? Did you raise NOI? Did you help resident satisfaction by how much? You know, year over year retention, closing ratios, all of these things. This is our accomplishments that you've done. We can list them on the resume. They help you stand out. And you can also take these things in when you're asking for a raise or a promotion. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot easier to go ask for that raise or promotion if you've got data backing it up. And if you've got that data readily available, then it's that much easier. If you say, listen, I helped raise the, the property value by a million dollars over the last five years. Can I, you know, I, I'd like a little bit more um, or however you want to word it, that's probably, that's terrible wording, but uh, you get the point is it's a lot easier if you have the numbers and the data to back it up. Because the thing is, is a lot of owners and hiring managers and investors and executives, they like data, you know, it's especially in real estate, you know, what are the numbers for the new acquisition? Uh, so having that helps you stand out among the crowd. And uh, number two, is the 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 tense and the in the verb tense on the resume a lot of the times people that haven't been in a job in 20 years or 10 years will have the verb tense like they're still doing the job today and i see this probably with 75 percent of resumes it you know, 
I just I laugh because if people put attention to detail at the top as a skill, and then they've got I'm processing or I'm creating or I'm overseeing something, and I haven't been in the job in 20 years. Well, you know that doesn't match. So we want to match. We want to create green flags, not red flags. And having the correct verb tense in your jobs is important. It just it's like grammar or <laughs> punctuation, all of those things. The tense is important. So uh be cognizant of that and number three is it's okay it's okay to have two or three page resume it's okay if you if you've been working for more than five years you can have two or three pages and unless you're a fresh grad uh just it's very difficult to list 20 years of experience or 10 years of experience in one page and make it look good i i rarely see it and so having two or three pages is, is okay, especially if you've got this information that makes people want to read a little bit more. And it, it takes an extra two or three minutes to read another page on the resume. It's not a big deal. Now, if you get into five or six or seven pages and it's just job description after job description, then that could be an issue because, you know, if you're a property manager, pretty much everybody knows the basic job description of a property manager, and especially if if you're listing the same job description on there under every job, then it kind of gets redundant and and people stop processing it. But if you've got the numbers, you've got you know all the correct information on there and it's easy to read, then it's okay to have a two or three page resume. I also talk with uh, other recruiters three page resume. I know that a lot of people say just one page, but trust me, uh, it's okay. The other thing that I want to talk about is the actual interview. So say you've got, you've got the great networking going on, you've got the great LinkedIn profile going on, you've got the great resume, you've got the great experience, which you all have, and you get to the interview. And in the interview, I mean, Sometimes it's not as much what you say in the interview, it's, it's how you say it in your eye contact. And, you know, with the eye contact, we wanna make sure obviously that we're looking people in the eyes. And if you, and this is difficult, I mean, I struggle with this as well, I'm working on it, but not looking down. Um, because, you know, when you're looking down and you're talking, number one, they can see if you're, if you're balding a little bit, <laughs> like I am. But uh, number two, it just doesn't show much confidence in what you're saying or yourself. So like if I'm looking down talking to you right now, it just it, it's, it, and it doesn't connect with the other people. And we want to connect with the people as much as possible. So in the interview, try to look at look them in the eyes or you can look to the side if you're trying to think of your next thing to say. The other thing is if it's a panel interview and there's three or four people in the interview, which happens a lot now, everybody wants, you know, especially with the culture and the teams, which is great. And say you've got three or four people around, one person may never even say anything in the interview. Like they just, but, but they're in the room for a reason. Their, their opinion matters, but they just never say anything. There's, a, there's one person asking questions the whole time. And when that happens, that's okay. We just need to get them involved and we can get them involved by eye contact and body language. And, and say, for instance, if, if, if one person asks a question, you can start your answer with that person and then scan the room as you're answering the question and then end the thought or end the answer with the person who asked the question. And so that way we can get the people involved in the conversation that never even talk you're looking in the eyes you're you're getting that connection through eye contact and through body language just taking up the space and this can be online too um just make sure that you're taking up you know you, you we can practice these things too and listen if anybody wants to practice interview i'm happy to do that as well um because I'm, I'm i really want to help people with these things but just taking up the space in your body language, and obviously making sure you're, you're standing up straight. Uh, just, you know, don't put your hands underneath your thighs or arms crossed or any of that stuff, because 
it just doesn't exude a lot of confidence. Uh, so those are the, the main things I wanted to talk about there. And then the other thing is the follow-up, right? After the interview, the follow-up is, is important. You know, a lot of people don't bother following up even after the interview. But the thing is, is the hiring managers and the owners, they're humans too. <laughs> and they, they don't know after an interview if the person's really interested or not. Uh, so a follow-up email, text, phone call, even if it's just very brief, can help that hiring manager, that owner, whoever you're interviewing with, help them get a better feeling of if you're interested in the role, if you're interested in pursuing the role further, and you can just thank them for their time, try to highlight a moment of the interview that you enjoyed. And if, if you discussed a problem or an issue with the company or the role, then you can put in the follow-up message, you know, how you're going to solve that problem. It's always helpful. And then ask them, you know, what, what is the next step? What do, what do we need to do next? So the follow-up is important. A lot of people do not do it. So if you do it, listen, if you do all these things as a candidate, you will stand out, I guarantee you. Nine out of 10 people do not do all of these things. So those are the main things that I wanted to talk about from the candidate side. So we got your LinkedIn profile, the resume, the interview, the actual interview, and the follow-up. And from the company side, from the hiring manager side, number one, and we kind of discussed it a little bit, was, you know, we are all human and we want to be as authentic as possible. We don't want to be robots and just asking the same, hey, I'm here because I have to be here. I have to ask you these questions and let's just get this over with so I can move on to the next candidate. And some people do interview that way and it's terrible. But I'm telling you, the, the best interview feedback that we receive and the candidates that are most excited about a job is when they say that person was really easy to talk with, they were down to earth. Those are the best candidate feedback. Those are the ones who are most interested in moving forward when you get that kind of feedback. And the other thing is like candidates in the interview and when they're applying for these jobs and going after the jobs, they're trying to visualize working with you and working for the company. You know, what does it look like to work for this company? So being authentic and being real, being honest about the role in the company goes a long way because then you're the candidate. We, we want to try to help them visualize actually working for the company and what it's going to be like. So be authentic. The other thing of, on the hiring manager side is having clear having clear expectations for the role. Um, and so sometimes people just don't know exactly what they're looking for, and when you start interviewing, it, and, and you're not clear about what you want this position to do or or become, then people just, it's, it's not an interesting role. Nobody wants to work for kind of a vague thing where there's no clear expectations for the role. You know, how does this, what, what does success look like in this role? Um, what's the support system for this role? What, uh, who are they going to be working with? And also just the interview process, you know, is this, is this going to be meeting with two people, five people, 10 people? How long is it going to take? Having those clear expectations up front goes a long way in helping uh, the candidate make that decision on whether to move forward or not. And also having a clear uh, career plan for the job. Uh, you know, if this person, if, if I start this, this role, what's it going to look like? You know, you can do the five year question to the company too, you know? If I'm here in five years, what do, you, what do you expect out of this role or what do you expect me to become in five years or what are your goals for a person like me to move into this role? And so that's okay. I mean, a lot of the times people are looking for a new role because they don't feel supported. And 
they're looking for a new position that has that support. So if you address those things and have those clear expectations, clear uh, support for the role, then it'll go a long way in, in helping that candidate make the decision. And the last thing, other than clear expectations, is is clear compensation right <laughs> some people uh, I, I think it's funny when you see job postings and the, the salary range is like fifty thousand to five hundred thousand it's like well, what does that mean um so you want to have at least a, a range in mind for the role um you know obviously you can go on the, the high end or the low end depending on the person and the experience but you want to have an idea of the range and really after COVID, I mean, people are very interested in what the, the other benefits are other than salary. And these are, you know, healthcare, PTO, and sick leave. All of these things are very important to candidates right now. So having that clearly defined beforehand is very helpful because that's, you know, people want to know that information about a company and about a role. You know, does it have housing? included in the position or not what is it what does that look like um is it hybrid you know in office remote all of those things you need to be clearly defined up front because otherwise you could be wasting both of your time if somebody only wants a remote role and you only want the people in office then you know you're just wasting your time so want to have the the clear expectations up front that also goes clear expectations but and then a clear, you know, if there's bonuses, have clear goals for the bonuses. You know, what are the KPIs that need to be hit to get the bonuses? Um, if it's a 20% bonus, is it is it a is it a, a personal expectations or is it company wide expectations or you know what does that look like? Um, having those clearly defined up front just goes a, a long way in, in helping the candidate make that decision again. And then the, the last thing on the company side is is just please know that, you know, just like on the candidate side, you can check references. Well, nowadays, especially with the networking, you know, candidates can check references on the employer as well. There's sites like Glassdoor. So uh, you need to know your Glassdoor reviews ahead of time because the, they may get asked in the interview, as well as you know, for former employees may talk about, you know, the, the company to new potential employees of the of the, the company, uh, especially nowadays, especially in property management, people change jobs a lot, you know, properties get changed to management all along, you know, a long time, bought and sold. So just be cognizant of what people are saying about you so you can address those things ahead of time and know how to address those things. Um, so that's, I think, everything that I wanted to discuss today. Uh, I love it. Great yeah. job, David. Um, I want to just say that I am not doing the Blair Witch Project here. My power keeps going <laughs> off. So we're expecting a big storm. And so if you see my thing going light and dark, that's what's going on. I have so many questions, but I want to, um, is it okay if we open it up to the group first to see um, if they have questions? So be before I start jumping in, uh, welcome Joseph, by the way, welcome Jennifer. I know you guys kind of jumped in. Do um, you guys want to introduce yourselves and does anyone have any questions before I jump in and ask questions? I did have follow-up questions after Jennifer and Joseph have a chance to introduce themselves. And I don't even know if Jennifer and Joseph want to, but I just want to give you the opportunity if you do. Um, all right, well, Rebecca, why don't you just go for it? Great. So David, I hear that people do check LinkedIn profiles when we receive resumes for people who are interested, but personally, I always feel a little bit stocky about it. So is there a way to go about looking at a person's LinkedIn profile without before I even give them a call for an interview? Like at what point do we cross that threshold into being awkward about it? Or hey, I'm actually kind of interested in learning a little bit more. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And you can go on LinkedIn and change your settings to where if you're looking at a profile, you could be 
private. Or you can just have it to where it says your company is looking at, at that uh, profile. So it could be anybody in your company looking at that person. Or you can change it to where it just shows anonymous, I think. But that's a great question. No, all the time we get owners, uh, you know, we'll ask people, what, what's the ideal person for this role? And they'll send back, hey, here's the LinkedIn profile of the person that could be a perfect fit. You're like, okay, that helps. I think Tara is frozen, so. You guys hear me? Yeah, kind of. Oh, you guys, there's some massive storm coming. You're looking sharp, David. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the whole presentation setup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Can you guys hear me? See me? Well, yeah. you know, that's another thing I wanted to say is sometimes, you know, I'll say these things to people and they'll get very defensive. And I was going to say, try to put your judgment hat to the side for a second. Because um, it's really trying to help. But. Hey, Joseph, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm Joseph Knack. Uh, currently work for Flamingo, customer success manager, and have had a lot of experience on site. And now I'm on the technology side of this, the industry, which I really appreciate. And I think is a lot more fun on this side than the operation side, for sure um just being able to like meet a bunch of people see things from more a like a bird's eye view and get to travel all over the country and um join these conferences where a lot of people just come together and share a bunch of knowledge and you know there's a lot more there's a lot of support on the vendor side for sure in the operation side it's really easy to get kind of stuck in the day-to-day -day and not have like that career growth or trajectory that you know, we all are kind of envisioning for ourselves is why we're all here, you know, seeking mentorship and or menteeship. And uh, yeah, just been really honored and stoked to be a part of this group since it started. I love it. Um, does anyone else have questions before I jump in and ask some of mine? Well, I think Jennifer wanted to introduce herself. Oh, Jennifer. Oh, yeah. I just saw you in the chat. Did you want to come offline and say hey? Unless she's not able to. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, uh, my phone's being weird and going in and out. So I wasn't able to, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to. No, just happy to be here. I'm Jennifer. I'm a regional manager out here in PA. And um, I love all these point pointers for both sides. It's, you know, if you're looking for career growth, try this, but also a different way of looking at resumes when we receive them as well. Um, so it helps on, on both ends. And I am definitely a LinkedIn stalker. I stalk everybody. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Jennifer, can you share if you're looking for a mentor or mentee, um, how would you like to be using this group right now? So through this group, I've actually found two mentors already who have helped me a lot. And the number one thing that I've learned so far is don't be afraid to take your career in your own hands and advocate for yourself, which was something that I was not great at before and i am really working on that with the help of my two mentors um i love to say that i currently mentor my whole team they would probably all agree because i'm in their faces all the time about their goals <laughs> but i love helping people and helping them develop so i would gladly gladly um take on some mentees that's fantastic can you share who the two mentors are that you've met through the group yes carrie sitterly and Melissa Joy. Oh, you're in some two very, very awesome, capable hands. That's for sure. Right. I couldn't be more thrilled. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, okay. Thank you, Jennifer. And I'm so glad you were able to speak. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're here, part of the call. Um, David, can I fire away a few things at you? Sure. So, I just went, I think this is so poignant for me because I just went through the interview process as a candidate. Um, I think most of you know, I just started with ADT multifamily about two months ago. And so it's exhausting. 
And it's, um, I think, I think one of the points that I would like to just make is just always remember how emotional it is for the candidate, because um, to your point about the follow up, I think one of the things that I think, not just multifamily, but um, candidates in general, we want to receive follow up as well. And I think it's just really disheartening to see the textbook canned responses if you get one at all that you're not the right fit and so um i think just if we if we are people that are interviewing candidates um just take a minute to remember how emotional it is for that person that's sitting there either with you in person or virtually it's a really tough position to be in but also take the time to follow up with that person um like I'm also now interviewing and building a team at ADT. We have a recruiting department that can send those messages, but I try to take the extra step. And if somebody wasn't chosen um, to, to give them a note from me personally, not just recruiting the recruiting department. So I just wanted to add that. Does anyone want to chime in on that? Or David, do you, do you have anything to add on that point? No, I mean, you interviewed the people for a reason. So, I mean, obviously, at one point you thought they were a good fit and it, it is important uh, because the other thing, too, that people don't realize is say you're, you're interviewing for a property manager, you can only pick one property manager, but there could be three great property managers. And sometimes one thing will happen after a couple of weeks with that new property manager that they do hire and it doesn't work out. And then they'll say, hey, can we go back to these other property managers? And when you go back to them, they're like, well, no, they never called me back. They never got back. Why would I want to go work for them now? And so that's one reason why it is important to do the follow up on the hiring manager side, too. That's a really good point. Um, I, I, you kind of forget about that. Like, and you're testing both sides are testing each other. Right. So it could be um, to, you know, in 90 days or even 60 days, you realize like, oh, I made I made a poor choice. This wasn't a really good fit. And sometimes that's OK. But to your point, if you're not treating those other candidates um, who you did talk to with respect, um, they might be gone, right? And they might be like, you know what? I didn't really like how you treated me. So um, that's a really good point. I wanted to ask you your opinion and, and just pose this to the group. Also, um, where does everybody stand on putting your photo on your resume? Like to your point about link, like we all look at LinkedIn. How do you feel about adding it to your resume? I personally will put my LinkedIn URL on my resume so that way it could push them directly out. And I was taught, I've been working with a career coach and they taught me, hey, your resume should be exactly what's on LinkedIn as well. So like your experience at one company, it should be the exact same. So essentially your resume is LinkedIn but you could also provide it in a paper format and touching on like what you were saying previously, it's like when interviewing with the company, it feels good when you're like desired and sought after rather than just being like another person to interview and go through that process. So um, being like, feel like wanted is really important. And like also touching on like, Oh, being second or third option like no one wants to be like second or third option like they want to feel like they're the first option so regardless if they are number two or number three candidate making them feel like they are number one even if it doesn't work out is really important that's so true um and david you talked about in the beginning uh you started about uh, or reminding us like how often you should be updating your resume and one tip that works for me is each time i hit some sort of a milestone um at work i will um, go to my resume and mark that not because i'm trying to go look for another job but if for some reason i find myself where i need to be i don't have to remember like it's already there but it also is kind of cool to put it on paper and really just see that as like, wow, you just hit that occupancy or you just did, you know, whatever that sales goal is, or you've, you've surpassed your quota, whatever your role is. So um, just one of those tips that I think would be helpful is just 
every time you hit a milestone, throw it on your, um, it, you could either, even throw it on your LinkedIn, depending on how you structure your LinkedIn, everybody does it differently. But, um, and the other thing I wanted to ask you, David, from, from your position at South Coast Partners, as part of your interview process, when you're meeting with people, have you incorporated video, like where you send them to maybe your own internal platform and you ask them to ask answer a few questions and they submit a video before you talk to them? Uh, we've tried that. There's actually a software service that does that. They, you, can, you can put in questions and they can send you videos. But for the, the roles that we worked on, I mean, it's kind of hard to get a VP of operations to submit a video like that. Um, they just don't, they don't care. Like they're like, no, why would I do that? So some of those roles, but I think, you know, for some of these other roles that may require less experience in multifamily, then that could be very beneficial actually to, to, I, we had a company that they were hiring a marketing uh, person right out of college, you know, in, and they were they wanted that video like they wanted everybody to send a 60 second video and so we did do that and it was beneficial um but for some of these more senior level roles it hasn't we we did try a software like that for a year and for us it just didn't work but it was very impressive um i think it could be good for a a, a company with 400 and 500 employees that needs to hire you know a lot of leasing agents or something like that well, and I think the way you use LinkedIn, like I'll pick on Joseph because I always do because he's really great at LinkedIn, but like he just posted a video today um, for about a minute. And so like if if you're really utilizing LinkedIn in a great way, that next potential employer, if they're looking and doing their research um, and, and looking at your history and what you're posting, they could get a preview of how Joseph's personality is right there just based on what he posted. Um, so I think if you're, if you're able to do that, that's really good. And Maury, I'm curious to pick on you for just one second, since you just went through this whole process, anything you want to share about your journey and experience through the interview process that could help this group? <laughs> yes, yes, I did go through a good bit of interviews. Um, uh, I did have almost, I was almost in the Valley of Despair, but I got out of it quickly. One thing I'll say is anyone who's going through this, um, stay optimistic. I know that a lot of recruiters, honestly, it's kind of weird, but they interviewed me really just to hear my story and I never got a call back. So I saw a lot of that firsthand. I didn't never really had to be in contact with a lot of recruiters at a time, but I guess if you blow up on social media, there will be recruiters who want to hear your story. Um, but after that, um, really just follow up. I didn't get followed up with anybody who I, really ended up pursuing was um, the company who I was with and or who trained me in the beginning. Um, so a lot of it was really just recruiters, I think, wanting to hear. So I'm happy to be listening to David today because you're really turning me around on recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> now, if well, we can so here's the other thing. our mm -hmm. own recruiters to listen to this, not just the hiring managers, because they are our first impression at a lot of organizations. And I've heard those calls that can come across very like A, B, C questions, and they're very cardboard, or very flat, and it doesn't build that good rapport with our candidates when we're looking for the most ideal candidate. They're going to get scooped up by companies. Like the, the gold ones will get scooped up somewhere, somehow. And I want them to be with me, not necessarily <laughs> with my competition. What, um, Rebecca, at your level, what um is is there anything like a kind of a motto or, or like something that has worked really well for you in your career as a director um of multifamily management like through the ranks that that you could share with the group that you that you think is just like this is something i believe in and i always do in my my recruiting process um it is and i i come up with creative questions that aren't boilerplate because the boilerplate questions that everybody looks up on YouTube, they have memorized. I want to hear their problem solving or funny, bef long before this group, Tara, for real, one of my questions was, tell me about your most favorite boss. I'm guessing they probably just popped into your head when I asked you that question. And then they don't have a chance to really overanalyze it. They just mm -hmm. jump in. And then I asked the reverse, tell me, I don't need a name. Tell me about your least favorite and why, 
And it helps me know how I will lead that person because if the type of manager that they can't stand is how maybe my organization manages, mm -hmm. I know that even if they're great on paper, it's not gonna be a good fit and they're not gonna love being there. And I don't want that for them either. That's a really good tip. And um, my most favorite one that I'll share with you guys, because I've been interviewing so much lately, is um, I don't, use, to your point, Rebecca, I don't use like the cookie cutter. It's more about like, you still want to understand their analytical thinking, creative thinking, and all of that um, problem solving ability. But one of the things I always ask is I'll say from tell me about your morning routine during the work week, before, you know, not including the weekend. And I had one girl that went into like this dissertation and she ended up talking about the evening, the weekends. And so, okay, I'm like, okay, so her listening skills are poor. She's not very organized. She has a very scattered mind. She's gonna be kind of a difficult person to manage. Um, for me, I, I like people that are a little bit more like, they, they listen, they follow directions. Um, but I also like to see how people's mind how they work and motivate themselves before the clock starts, so to speak. And so that interview question has served me really well to find some good team players um, and how they, I always ask too, as part of that, do you make your bed? I love people that make their bed every morning. <laughs> I was tired, um, it had been a while ago and I, um... I needed, and it was these three specific questions, but one of them was like, tell me about um, which book did you read last, something else. I was like, these three questions, like I want to get to know you questions, but for the person who didn't tell me about their book or the one who went off on the tangent or didn't answer the questions at all, I was like, well, that's not going to be, that's not going to be an admin who can keep up with me and I need somebody who can like read my half sentences and chase after me. <laughs> David, I'll give you the floor to close out since we're at the top of the hour. Thank you so much again for this presentation. Any final um, thoughts that you'd like to share with the group? Um, no, I mean, I just really appreciate everybody being here and the opportunity here. And and just to reiterate too, I mean, and as you get you know further up in the hierarchy or corporate ladder, like where, where Rebecca is, um, you know, the competition gets stiffer, uh, you know, on the, on the, property level side on the on-site roles the the retention you know is like what 30 percent 35 percent well as you get further up in the regional managers and vps i mean then you start getting into five and eight percent retention people don't change jobs as much so when those do come available there's a lot more people there and the competition's a little bit stronger too so having these things on the candidate side really do matter yeah, absolutely. And if you're not following David on LinkedIn, follow him, connect with him. And um, you never know if, it, it, and again, David, there's um, some folks who've joined the group recently who actually, I've encouraged them. They're like, oh, I feel like I need a job to join this group. You don't. What better place to come and feel safe and supported and network um, until you find that next fit. So there are some folks, if if any of you feel that soft spot for those that might be um, on their next opportunity, there are there's actually a, a lady who just joined either today or yesterday. I think it was yesterday. She she doesn't have an opportunity right now. She was just part of a layoff. So we have a few of those, and um, I would encourage you just as wonderful mentors and mentees to just support and reach out to the rest of the group. Um, and David, if you find opportunities for some of those folks. That'd be great, but I think this is great. And I'll obviously we'll share this with the group. They can use your tips and tricks on their next interview. Absolutely. And if everybody does want, you know, I can definitely review anybody's resume or profile or anything like that. I'm happy to set up a call with anybody that's that might want to. I so appreciate you. Thanks for all the effort you you put into this presentation. And I'm sorry I was a couple minutes late to my own party. <laughs> I appreciate everybody here. Everyone have a great, uh, great night. I'm going to try and weather this storm <laughs> that's coming my way. See y'all. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.